Hello everyone this is part 10 of what if Naruto changed, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. Senju soon it had awakened this morning actually believing today would be a beautiful day. She had every reason to believe so, as the sky was clear of any clouds and the soothing wind was able to keep the village cool despite the excessive heat that bombarded Kanoa this fine morning. On the way to her office, people stopped her to compliment her on her duties as Hockage. Overall, it would certainly be a nice day, a relaxing one in these troubled times, because of the threat generated by Akatsuki. Nothing could ever take away her happiness. That was before entering in her office and seeing that Naruto and Yugao had returned from their C-ranked mission on Sunagakur. Just by seeing the brat, she immediately became aware that while Naruto was alive and breathing, he would always give her a headache. After hearing the report, Sunid shouldn't have been surprised. So let me get this straight, the pause to rub her forehead in a pathetic attempt to ease the painful headache was quite amusing. You two left Kanoa to Sunagakur for a simple C-ranked mission. After delivering the scroll and receiving word of the Suna Council's approval of the alliance, you two came back to Kanoa, only to conveniently, I might add, bump into Uchiha Sasuke, who had escaped from Orokimaru's clutches and decided to engage in a fierce battle involving cursed seals and the fox's chakra. Naruto and Yugao nodded, allowing the Hokage more time to process the rest of the mission. After Naruto was victorious, an Akatsuki member came and took Sasuke away before either of you could capture him. The Chunin and Anbu captain on vacation nodded again, before waiting as the Hokage finished rubbing her forehead for a while. She then lifted her head to see the Chunin she grew so fond of. There were indeed times when Sunid wondered how her sensei managed to handle the boy. Let me ask you something, Naruto and I hope you can give me a straight answer, because I'm pretty much baffled at this point. Naruto was surprised and a little scared of the woman in front of him. She still hadn't stopped massaging her forehead. How is it that every time you're assigned a C-ranked mission, something terribly bad happens that raises the mission specs to at least A-ranked? I wonder if you are the one who looks for trouble or trouble somehow seeks you. Yugo and pretty much all hidden Anbu present in the Hokage's office would have laughed their off at the question if none of them knew how pissed off their leader could be when she started rubbing her forehead like that. Naruto, for his turn, couldn't help but offer an innocent smile at his hockage. However, now that Sunid raised a valid topic, Naruto began to wonder what the deal was here. Pretty sure that trouble is the one after me. You know that I wouldn't go after Sasuke. Sunid sighed once more and looked at the two shinobi. Yes, I do know. The good thing is that neither of you are hurt. The alliance was accepted by Suna, so both the Kazekage and the Reikage will be arriving here in one week, as per the agreement. There will be no more missions assigned to you Naruto, seeing as you will take part in the meeting. I will be calling Sakura and Kakashi here to inform them of the latest developments concerning Sasuke. Despite the severe headache you caused me, I'd say you did one hell of a job putting that brat in his place. Naruto simply nodded, before Suna turned to her. You gal, you are to report tomorrow to your Anbu team. The woman nodded, before both were dismissed for the time being, leaving Suna alone to ponder on things. I guess Sasuke wasn't that keen on Orokimaru taking his body, huh? A slight miscalculation in your plans, Haim. The back wall of the office suddenly shimmered and Jiraiya appeared with a serious visage. At least we are confident that our teammate won't be able to get his hands on Sasuke now that Akatsuki has him. In any case, I must prepare for when the cages arrive here in a week. Jiraiya nodded and was about to leave, when he remembered something about the snake Sanon. One last thing before I leave, there has been some rumors behind Sasuke's disappearance from Orokimaru's clutches. Though I hardly believe those to be true, I believe it's high time we took our time to assess its veracity. Soon had stopped her paperwork and looked at the P with a keen eye. Today really wasn't a good day and her gut feeling told that it was about to become even worse. Upon ushering the P about the content of the rumors, she was surprised when the man's eyes had lost their focus for a brief moment, indicating something akin to grief. Words out there are that while Sasuke escaped, someone invaded Orokimaru's room and K him. 
Sunid's eyes widened as she processed the rumor. I still remain skeptical about it seeing how far that snake goes to protect himself from both human and nature attacks. However, I'll look into it and let you know if it's really true. Sunid nodded, even though she was still busy processing everything. Who would be powerful enough to slip inside Orokimaru's lair and kay him so efficiently? As the woman issued Sakura and Kakashi for a meeting, Sunid began to ponder on the possibility of someone like Orokimaru, an S-ranked shinobi, BK without a huge and destructive battle behind it. Perhaps it was her instincts kicking, but she couldn't help but shake off the possibility that perhaps Orokimaru's demise was linked to what happened in Naruto and Yugao's altercation with Sasuke and the mysterious Akatsuki agent. Another question that now plagued the woman Hokage's mind was what Akatsuki could possibly want with Sasuke. As far as she was aware, they already have a pair of Sharingan in Itachi. Sunad stopped her in a monologue when she heard Sakura entering her office. Kakashi no doubt was already waiting behind the window for his student to arrive. As soon as both Junan and Chunan were lined up in front of the hockage, the woman released a sigh and began to explain about what happened. Kakashi, Sakura, I called you both here because of certain events that occurred with Uchiha Sasuke. Both members of Team 7 narrowed their eyes as Sunad began to report everything. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. After leaving their leader's office, Naruto and Yugao were casually walking amongst the streets of the village. Neither of them appeared in the mood for much, considering what happened on the way back from Sunagakur. Yugao wanted nothing more than a nice shower and to enjoy a quiet round of sake inside her home. When the Akatsuki appeared, the woman feared that they would take advantage of Naruto's fight and attempt to capture him. When the man left with Sasuke, the woman released her breath. She didn't even know that she was holding it. Turning to her boyfriend, his appearance appeared casual, almost aloof to the situation they had just walked away from. She could see in his eyes, though, that he was considering the situation carefully. It was clear that both needed to do something to shake their minds away from the outside world. Naruto, I think I'll head home and rest a bit. What about you? The blonde smiled tiredly at that. I think I'll head to Ichiraku's and have my usual ramen, but some relax and relaxation is a good idea. Meet at your house in about an hour. His question was met with a gentle K on his right cheek, before Yugo left in a shunshun. It took close to 10 minutes, before the blonde Chunan began his usual ritual of ramen worshipping. Before that, he had apologized to both Tuki and Ayami for not coming more often. Ayami only smiled at the boy, but her father kept his angry facade, before relenting and making another sequence of ramen bowls for their favorite customer. Half an hour later and with a full stomach, Naruto left the ramen stand and headed towards Yugao's apartment where he guessed the woman would be waiting with a bottle of sake. Equals 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 at Sunid's office equals equals equals. By the time the hockage finished reporting what happened, she waited to see their reaction regarding Sasuke. It was indeed a lot to take in, so soon it just waited. She could see the look of regret in Kakashi's face, despite the man's ability of concealing his emotions to others. She could also see the look of hurt in Sakura's. Honestly, Sunid wished the girl would let go of her academy crush. It just wasn't natural. The extent of their relationship was that of mere comrades. Five seconds later, Kakashi's look was transformed into apparent boredom like he usually did. It was how the man coped, after all. No doubt, he will leave the office and head to the memorial stone afterward. Sakura took longer to recuperate, before looking at her mentor. So what will we do, Hokage sama About Sasuke I mean. Sunad was already expecting said question and answered with a sigh, already expecting the backlash. Nothing, she didn't need to look up to see that Sakura was looking her incredulously. It is one thing when Sasuke was under Orokimaru's command, but now Akatsuki has him. They could be anywhere in the entire elemental nations. Even if we utilized our entire ninja force just to search for him, which we won't, we wouldn't be able to cover everywhere. Looking up and matching her student's fierce gaze, Sunid finished her statement. You know this, Sakura. Sakura was considered by her mentor an outstanding medic nin and leveled minded in most situations, but when Uchiha Sasuke was concerned, it seemed as if Sakura simply reverted to her academy days and worshipped the Uchiha. The Chunin bluntly asked to be dismissed and left the room, leaving Sunid and Kakashi alone to converse. As to you Kakashi, I'll give a simple word of advice. 
Sarutobi sensei had the same look on his face when Orokimaru was mentioned. It wasn't anyone's fault, but Sasuke's. Now, Kakashi, in one week's time, both the Rakage and the Kazekage will arrive in order to discuss our alliance towards the elimination of the Akatsuki. As one of Kanoa's elite junin as well as Naruto's sensei, you will be participating. Just to let you know, you are dismissed. Kakashi nodded and turned to leave towards the door, before he turned and addressed the Hokage about some misconception behind her words earlier. She noticed his mood changing rapidly. Like Orokimaru was for Sandaim sama Sasuke is my responsibility, Sunid sama You'd feel the same burden had Shizun betrayed Kanoa. Not waiting to hear a reply, Kakashi left in a shunshun, leaving Sunid alone to ponder on the words spoken by the elite Junin. Bonds formed between master and student were hard to break and indeed when a student defects, the master bore with the consequence. However, while Orokimaru was like a son to Sarutobi sensei, Sasuke and Kakashi were student and master for little more than a year perhaps even less. Shizun has been her apprentice for 20 years. Of course, if she betrayed the village, it would be her responsibility. Perhaps, Kakashi was thinking of someone else when he mentioned Sasuke. She had known Kakashi's teammate Uchiha Obito, since they were a part of the Yondime Hokage's Genin team. She knew of the incident regarding Obito's D and the how Kakashi's life deteriorated since then. It was a shame really that he couldn't let go of the past. But, then again, who was sooner to say anything about that? He stopped however by the door and turned slightly to the hockage. Equals 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 with Sasuke equals equals equals. After taking Uchiha Sasuke back to his hidden base of operations, the Akatsuki agent placed the young Uchiha's body on a wooden table as he proceeded to analyze the changes done to Sasuke by Orokimaru. Tobi was no alien to the experiments conducted by the snake in order to maximize a shinobi's strength, speed, chakra capacity amongst other aspects. After a quick inspection, it was clear that whatever Orokimaru had done to Sasuke wasn't visible. His body muscle was perfectly natural. With his Sharingan, Tobi could detect a great pull of chakra in Sasuke's, meaning that Orokimaru wanted his next body to have a vast wealth of energy at his disposal. Enhancement drugs were obvious uses, so Tobi discarded it. He was however immensely surprised to see a strange seal located on the Uchiha's chest and it was glowing when Tobi focused chakra nearby. The man was even more surprised when a toxin was released from the seal, forcing Tobi to quickly summon his battle fan and force the toxin out of the cave. It was clear that the seal wasn't the snake's doing. Certainly, if Orokimaru was planning on taking over Sasuke's body, then he wouldn't place a seal that released such a dangerous toxin. He would be dead instantly. Someone was really concerned that Orokimaru might take over the Sharingan and took measures to prevent such a possibility. Immediately, Kanoa came to mind. Tobi knew of a man inside the village's forces that could very well be capable of such schemes. Shimura Danzu was the leader of a dark branch in the Anbu forces and hidden mastermind behind many of the dark steps taken by the hidden village in the leaves. However, after much consideration, Tobi ruled Danzu out of the equation. While it could very well be his doing, Tobi knew the deal made between Danzu and Itachi before the day he emmed the Uchiha clan. If Danzu lifted a finger against Sasuke, Itachi would come out and reveal the truth. No, Danzu wasn't the author of the seal. Besides Kanoa, Tobi couldn't think of any village who knew about Orokimaru and Sasuke. Another question that plagued Tobi's mind was how Orokimaru failed to see such a seal in his vessel. That meant that the caster was at least a master in the art of sealing and coming from Kanoa, Tobi's mind immediately went to the Yondime Hokage and his expertise in using Fuinjutsu in close combat. Since the man was D, Tobi moved on to either the Yondime's master or his student Kakashi. As sensei of Uchiha Sasuke, Kakashi could very well be the one behind this, but as skilled as the son of Sakumo was, he was no match for Orokimaru. Jiraiya, on the other hand, was as skilled as the snake and also considered a master in the art of sealing. A very interesting approach taken by the Gama Sanon, Tobi mused. Quite possibly the god I'm Hokage was aware if not even responsible for the powerful toxin's creation. Tobi let out an amused laughter as he waited for Uchiha Sasuke to awaken from unconsciousness. While doing so, Tobi's mind returned to Sasuke and Naruto's fight yesterday. As usual, the boy surprised Tobi. He had already known Naruto to be skilled as he was the one that defeated Deodara and Sasori. However, 
the amount of the fox's chakra used by Naruto against Sasuke was unheard of until now. Tobi knew of the fox chakra's toxic nature as well as the fact that every time that Naruto attempted to use it, his judgment became clouded. While Tobi wished for Sasuke's defeat at Naruto's hands, he reasoned that Naruto's meteoric increase of skill was something to worry about in the future. He noticed that Sasuke was stirring from the table and moved closer to the younger Uchiha. The sooner Sasuke saw Tobi's outfit, he will make the connection and demand answers. Uchiha Sasuke, for his part, slowly opened his eyes as he saw the cave ceiling. He was immediately startled as the last memory he had was fighting against the Dobe and losing. It was infuriating how Naruto was able to counter his every move. Everything Sasuke tried Naruto had something to counter. Now he didn't know if he was in Kanoa or not. If Naruto managed to defeat him, then he and that woman next to him would no doubt take him back to the village. So you are awake. The voice startled the young Uchiha as he turned and saw a man with orange mask. Like Tobi expected, Sasuke's eyes glanced his outfit briefly. Who are you and where am I? Who am I is a rather complicated question and I don't feel like answering it right now. As to where you are, let's just say inside a cave somewhere in fire country. Sasuke snarled at the introduction, before feeling the pain in his muscles courtesy of a certain Kanoa Chunin. That was quite a beating you received yesterday, Sasuke-kun. If it weren't for me taking you away, right now you'd be waking up in Kanoa. Be glad that I have use for you. Otherwise you'd find yourself in the comfort of Kanoa's finest interrogators. Tobi snorted in amusement as Sasuke snarled once more. He crossed his arms and casually took a seat on top of a medium-sized wooden box. Now that you've settled down somewhat, I'd like to get to know Itachi-kun's younger brother. As expected, Sasuke's eyes were ablaze in fury. His eyes, if possible, were burning the strange man's outfit, the same one that his curse of a brother wore. You will tell me where Itachi is and you will tell me right now. Sasuke even activated his Sharingan and added K intent, the likes of which Tobi remembered from Orokimaru. It seems you believe yourself to be in a position where you can demand anything. How amusing. Itachi did say you lacked proper manners. Tobi ignored Sasuke's angry outburst and cleared his throat a bit. Instead of telling you where Itachi is, no matter how much I really want to do that believe me, I'll tell you what I believe you would like to ask Itachi himself. Aren't you curious, Sasuke-kun? Aren't you curious to know the reason Itachi K your entire clan? Tobi could practically see the machinations in Sasuke's brain working to process everything. Before you naively say that he did everything just to test his skills, I will explain you the truth about Itachi's actions. It would be nice to know that Itachi had other reasons, right? That he wasn't the ruthless K you always thought he was. If it was one thing Tobi most enjoyed was to mess with people's minds. He loved seeing the confused expressions on the victim's face. How would you know about what happened and why would you tell me? Tobi smirked behind his mask. So the Uchiha had some brains after all. It would be too easy if he didn't. First of all, he told me and as to why I would tell you, it's because I feel like it. If you don't believe me, then you can use your Sharingan. You can tell when a person is lying, can't you? Trust me, Sasuke-kun, I do not have any reason to lie to you. I merely wish to impress upon you the actual truth of what happened. After that, you can do whatever you want. If you still want to K him, I'll tell you where he is. Sasuke looked at the man for a while, before briefly nodding. Toby smirked. The boy was curious about it and Toby wouldn't even think of omitting anything. With that, he began to explain everything to Sasuke about the truth behind the event known as the Uchiha clan massacre. Author note, I won't bother writing the event. It's the same as canon. As Toby explained the actual truth of what happened back then, Sasuke's red Sharingan eyes were widening considerably. It was practically mandatory for a shinobi to doubt information coming from an unknown source, no matter how factual it seemed. If there was one time that the young Uchiha cursed the existence of the Sharingan it was now. He wanted desperately not to believe any word this stranger in front of him was saying. However, while the accursed Dujutsu was the clan's pride, now Sasuke would give anything not to have it, because he couldn't see any deceit coming from the man's words. If the Sharingan hadn't spotted deceit, then it was the truth. Uchiha Itachi, 
the man Sasuke despised more than anything and also whose existence Sasuke was dedicated to erase, M the entire Uchiha clan, under orders from the higher-ups of Kanoa. It was simply inconceivable. Tobi could see that Sasuke was still in denial, hence his plan was not done yet. Uchiha Itachi loved his village, clearly more than the clan. So he acted as a double agent for the Hokage in order to prevent a B-civil war that was sure to occur had it not been for Itachi's actions. Thus, he was forced by the hidden village in the leaves to M his own family in order to save the entire village. After he acted in the village's name, he has become a missing nin, hunted for doing nothing but following the Hokage's orders. By now, Sasuke's body was trembling. His mind was a mess trying to process the information of Itachi, the Uchiha Itachi, his brother, the one who K his entire family just to test his capabilities, was actually forced to do this. Sasuke didn't even register two waterfalls falling without restrictions from his eyes. Suddenly, all repressed memories of that fateful day appeared and Sasuke remembered that after Itachi stated the reasons for doing what he did, Sasuke went after Itachi throwing kunai at him screaming VM. When Itachi merely deflected the kunai with his ninjato, Sasuke could see that Itachi was crying on that night. Now that the young Uchiha knew of what really happened, that Itachi did what he did under specific orders, he wondered how his older brother must have felt that day. It was the first and last time that Sasuke saw his older brother shed tears like that. By now, Sasuke was crying uncontrollably and his body was shaking. So unaware was the Uchiha of his own reflection that he haven't noticed the different design in his Sharingan much to Toby's silent amusement. Equals 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 one week later equals equals equals. When the sun rose in Kanoa, the village was in a buzz as shinobi were seen on the rooftops running left and right, north and south, in order to ensure that everything was in order for today's events. In a couple of hours, both the current kazekage and the current rakage would step inside the hidden village in the leaves followed by their bodyguards as well as their choices for the group that will be tasked with facing the Akatsuki and defeating them once and for all. However, Despite such an unprecedented event consisted of Kumogakura aligning with Kanoa, soon it wouldn't be the god I'm Hokage if her village was caught by surprise by Kumogakura, using this alliance in order to invade the village. Doing so otherwise would be a complete disregard to the events in the past and soon it was far too experienced to believe in simple messages. If the alliance was legit, then the rakage wouldn't feel something is amiss with the heavy security. The man respected strength above all else. The village prepared a very beautiful, if not heavily oppressive, room for the meeting to take place. It was located at the sublevel of the Hokage's administrative building and it was designed for meetings held by Kanoa and dignitaries from all over the elemental nations. The walls were made with special dark wood extracted from the lands where the Senju compound was located. The floor was 100% marble and was supporting a nice round mahogany made table with enough seats for the cages. Normally, the room could support a much bigger table, however the situation didn't call for it. The bodyguards needed to be close to their leader, but far away from the other cages, just in case one wanted to act rashly because of a grudge. Sunad wasn't worried, though, because the room was packed with chakra suppression seals as well as filled with Anbu personnel in the next door just in case. She took one of the seats available and remained there with her eyes closed and arms crossed as she waited for her fellow cages to arrive. Directly behind her, were Jiraiya, Gai, Kakashi, Nara Shikaku and the village's Jinchuriki, Naruto. Kakashi was busy reading his little orange book while ignoring Gai's relentless attempt of settling their battle score with a game of rock, paper or scissors. Shikaku was called in the meeting to be the strategist, but right now he was busy sleeping. Jiraiya, for his part, was observing his apprentice's unusual behavior. Surely the blonde wasn't as hyperactive as he was before the training trip but the last time he has seen Naruto like this was at the beginning of the training trip when Naruto was blaming himself for not being able to stop Uchiha Sasuke from fleeing the village. Quickly approaching the blonde, Jiraiya landed a hand on Naruto's shoulder, making the Chunin look at his teacher with a perplexed expression on his face. Jiraiya was smirking. Is everything all right there, kiddo? Naruto took a couple of seconds to answer, but nodded nonetheless. Yeah, just that I don't think I should be here. This meeting involves cages and elite Junin only. I'm a Chunin. Jiraiya frowned at that but smirked once more. Just a Chunin you may be, but you were not only able to defeat two Akatsuki members, but also managed to win against the Hachibi Jinchuriki, who was rumored to be the perfect Jinchuriki by fully mastering his Bayou. 
Naruto still remained contemplative despite hearing his achievements. You shouldn't sell yourself short, Naruto. Besides, this meeting isn't limited to rank, but one's strength and skill to face an S-ranked criminal. Without the Kyuubi's chakra, you are considered A-ranked already. Naruto nodded at the man with a smile on his face, despite knowing that the only reason he had managed to defeat Kirabi was because the man severely underestimated him. However, he was completely caught by surprise when Jiraiya resumed the conversation. When the meeting is over, meet me at the top of this building. I believe it's time for you to learn how to fully use the fox's chakra. At this, everyone in the room stopped and looked at the conversation. Soon it merely smirked at this, since she and P had already discussed this prior to the meeting. If Naruto wished to face S-ranked criminals, he would need to be stronger than he was already. What do you mean fully use the fox's chakra? I thought I was already doing so progressively. By now, Naruto could use full three tails worth of chakra without losing his mind. Jiraiya, though, smirked and placed another hand on Naruto's shoulder. The seal crafted by the Yondime Hokage indeed allows the fox's chakra to mingle with your own over time increasing your chakra capacity and your chakra coils. However, what is inside you right now is merely half of the fox's chakra. Like he expected, the blonde's eyes almost left its sockets, but he continued. The other half is safely guarded by a complex seal also designed by the Yondime. He entrusted it to me and the toads to keep until it was time for you to fully use it. Trust me, when we're done, there won't be much in this world that will be able to face you. Everyone in the room was smiling at the blonde Chunin as he nodded at Jiraiya with a smile on his face. Equals 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 Kanoa's gates equals equals equals. At this exact time, nine individuals were seen crossing the huge gates of Konohagakur. Full squads of Anbu were watching their every move from the shadows, just in case anyone tries anything. The faces they recognized were both from the Rakage and the Kazekage as they walked side by side. Behind the Rakage, the Anbu personnel immediately recognized Kumo's two Jinchuriki ni Yugito and Kirabi. If these two so wished to release their beasts in the middle of the village, they could cause a great load of damage instantly. Close by them, two more Kumo nins were seen. The first one had dark skin and had white hair like the Rakage. He was using a white Junin vest and loose back pants. He carried a bored expression similar to Kakashi's. The most experienced Anbu managed to distinguish a very peculiar tattoo on his left shoulder, that once belonged to the Sandime Rakage, meaning that the man knew how to use the previous cage's black lightning techniques. The second and last Kumo Nin of the group was a Kunoiki. She had the same style of black pants but her Junin vest was red instead of white. The male Anbu immediately felt the need to whistle at her nice figure followed by her beautiful and long red hair that was easily reaching her legs. It was hard to see because of the long hair, but they could see the two scabbards strapped on her back. All in all, besides the Yondime Rakage, Kumo had brought two Jinchuriki and two elite Junin. These group alone could provide Kanoa one nasty headache. The Kazekage's group was by no means less impressive as Gara, the Kazekage, was also a Jinchuriki. They also recognized Suna's elite Junin Baki, one of the involved in the Suna sound invasion that occurred four years ago. Behind Baki, two more Suna Nin followed. One of them was a Kunoiki, beautiful as well, with long black hair. She wore a black kimono strapped by a red bow. Strapped on her back, were two medium-sized metal-made battle fans. By her side, was a man that was entirely covered by a large sand color robe from head to toe. Because of his choice in outfit, none of the Anbu personnel managed to get a good look on the guy. The two groups stopped soon in front of a platoon of nine Anbu with Yamato being the leader. Greetings Kazekage Dono, Rakage Dono, I'll be responsible for taking you where Hokage Sama is waiting. Please follow me. Both cages nodded and briefly looked at the squads of Anbu following them from the roof, blending in the shadows. Gara wasn't phased by this, since he knew that it was mostly because of Kumo's presence inside the hidden village in the leaves. The rakage, though, only smirked. It was only prudent, in his opinion. The man would be disappointed if the hockage simply took his word for it and not be prepared for surprises. Kanoa hadn't earned its reputation in the past as strongest of the hidden villages out of luck after all. As they passed, the citizens were giving them weary looks. It took a total of 10 minutes for everyone to reach the place of destination, the Hockage's office building. 
As soon as Yamato opened the door to the meeting, the ones inside the room turned their heads towards the new arrivals and quickly greeted them. Naruto quickly nodded towards his fellow Jinchuriki, being the only ones of the group that he knew so far. Each group settled to one of the two available seats in the table. The cages placed their respective hats on top of the table, before taking a seat. The bodyguards took place behind their respective leaders. Greetings Kazekage Dono, Rakage Dono. Welcome to Konohagakur. Both leaders nodded. The Rakage cleared his throat, calling all the attention in the room. Greetings Hokage Dono, since Kumo was the one who proposed this alliance, I feel it's best if I begin. First of all, I'd like to extend an appreciation towards Kanoa for bringing forward the information about the Akatsuki. Despite being humiliated that my stupid brother lost to the QB Jinchuriki because of his idiocy, if it wasn't for your presence, Yugito would be captured by them. I'd never imagined seeing Kakazu from Waterfall. Sunad nodded, clearly satisfied knowing that when Kakashi came with the information, the Rakage, acted all proudly, refused at first. Even if it wasn't Kanoa's intention, their assignment managed to indirectly save Yugito, the Nibi Jinchuriki who was standing behind the Rakage. Now, as I recall from the Alliance proposal, each cage were to choose four elite shinobi to form a specialized group against the Akatsuki. With that being said, I'd like to begin by presenting you the ones I've chosen. Before you proceed, Rakage Dono, allow me to introduce Kanoa's chief of strategy, Nara Shikaku. He will be here to aid us in how to deal with the organization. The Rakage nodded at the grown Shikamaru like. Nara Shikaku, member of Kanoa's famous Ino Shika Cho formation and one great pain in the air to deal with. Shikaku merely smirked at the compliment. It's an honor to be here, Kazekage Dono, Rakage Dono and Hokage Dono. With that out of the way, the Rakage began announcing his group of four indications. First one of the group is named Darui, one of my elite Junin, master of water and lightning techniques. He possesses the Rantan, storm release, Keke Genkai, thus able to mix water and lightning techniques into one. Besides that, he is a sword fighter. After his presentation, the elite Junin in question stepped forward and bowed in respect to the other present. Naruto saw the bored expression on this man's face and couldn't help but see his Junin sensei Kakashi. They both looked like they would fall asleep any time now. At least, with Shikamaru was different. He was asleep on occasions. He saw Shikaku busy studying Daru's info brought by the Rakage, while doing cross-references with the ones he already had of the ninjas from Kanoa. Shikaku's job right now was to form three groups of four and elect the leader of the alliance. Second one of the group and last of the non-Jinchuriki is Niyugan, elite Junin and Yugito's older sister. Also a swordswoman like Darui and master of fire and earth techniques, she also possesses an elemental Keke Genkai called Yuten, Lava Release. After introducing yet another Keke Genkai, the people in the room figured that the man enjoyed flaunting about the shinobi of his village. Naruto, though, was interested in seeing if he would be able to mix his elements wind and water. I'll spare the need for introducing both Yugito and Kirabi, because of the known abilities. Naruto could have sworn the man looked at him for a second there but kept quiet about it. Shikaku had already received the files of the Jinchuriki based on Kanoa's own information, hence he didn't need introductions. The Hachibi Jinchuriki looked like he wanted to give his own introduction, but one look from the Rakage convinced him otherwise. Seeing as the Rakage's introduction was finished, Gara cleared his throat and started with the ones he brought to form the group. From sooner, I've chosen my sensei Baki, who I believe Kanoa's file has enough info for me to waste valuable time introducing. Behind Baki, these are Kazetakai and Jukas, both elite Junins of Sunagakur. Before Gara could continue, the atmosphere in the room shifted and everyone turned to look at the pissed-off Rakage. He was looking at Kazetakai with enough hatred that people were beginning to get anxious. Said man, though, just turned and smirked at the man. His face showed some wrinkles. He had short black hair which was barely hidden beneath the turban. His eyes were closed as he nodded towards the Rakage. Is there something wrong, Rakage Dono? A snarled once more and addressed the Kazekage, this time more controlled. I thought I kay him in the last great shinobi war. Kazetakai slowly began to laugh in amusement, further irritating the Rakage. At the time, I made you believe you kay me, Rakage Dono. My platoon was retreating, so I need to as well. 
I used a subtle genjutsu at the time making you believe you had K-Mi. It was war time so you didn't stick around to verify the K. The look on the Reikage's face indicated that he wasn't thrilled about knowing about this development. This man before him was one of Suna's most dangerous shinobi in the war and at the time, I remembered him using those damn wind-oriented genjutsu that sounded and appeared so realistic. Indeed, the Kazekage wasn't pulling any punches here. The riot gay subtly looked at the kunoiki next to his mortal enemy and frowned. Indeed, Gara wasn't pulling any punches, not against Akatsuki. The Reikage smirked at this and was really excited to see what this group is capable of. He had no doubt that Kanoa would provide excellent candidates if the ones in the room is any indication. Seeing that the situation was normal, Gara continued. Kazetakai is one of Suna's elite junin, master of wind and earth ninjutsu. He is a master of the Kusari Gama and so far no one has ever reached his level of expertise in my village. He also is a master of genjutsu like he so explained when engaging Reikage Dono in battle once. Next to him is Jukas, also elite junin and the strongest fan user in Sunagaku. As you might know, she is a master of wind techniques. She is also very proficient in the art of taijutsu. Upon hearing this, Maito Gai smirked which wasn't unnoticed by Kakashi who sighed in dismay. Shikaku received the paperwork and moved to a different pile as he now had the rest of information needed to sort out the groups. He already had the information of the Kanoa Shinobi, so he was now focused on the task ahead while Sunid began introducing her chosen ones. Author note, I'm not going to waste time introducing the Kanoa Nins, because all of you know about Kakashi, Gai and Jiraiya. After introducing the group formation, the cage moved on to information about the enemy organization and known weaknesses. Shikaku wasn't focused on the discussion as he was busy processing the information of the chosen ones and how to create three cohesive units under one leadership. He already had three known leaders for each group. The Kazekage, being a Jinchuriki and a cage, was the first group's leader. Darui would be leader of group number two and Jiraiya was the leader of the third and last group. At first, he wanted to place at least one Jinchuriki per team, but he had four Jinchuriki and three teams, so it wouldn't be possible. Starting with Gara's group, Shikaku chose a close-range fighter first since Gara is a long-range fighter using his sand. Niyugan, being a close-range Kenjutsu fighter, would complement Gara nicely. She was also extremely ninjutsu capable, so she could move to midrange as well. Next, he needed a midrange fighter with knowledge of Genjutsu in order to act both as support and front lines if necessary. Hitaki Kakashi was a fine choice. He was considered a jack of all trades and should be able to assist the entire team. The last member of the team, Shikaku side, had to be Yugito, for reasons not related to a wrong assumption of the woman's skills, but the fact that one of the team needed two Jinchuriki. Next was Jiraiya's team. Shikaku knew that the P wouldn't have it if his student wasn't on his team, so Naruto was the first and obvious choice. The Chunin, despite being the youngest of the group, thus the least experienced, was a force not to be trifled with. Naruto was considered both close and midrange fighter with excellent knowledge in wind and water techniques, not to mention his bojutsu and vast chakra reserves, QB included. Kazetakai would fit in nicely with his genjutsu techniques. He would act both as support and front lines like Kakashi in the first group. The only element missing in the second group was long-range support and Jukas was the obvious choice with her fan wind techniques. She was able to produce mass long-range wind techniques with those. Also, being a master of taijutsu, she could shift to close range and aid anyone, a powerful ability and also very rare in the shinobi world. The third group would be filled with the last four that weren't chosen so far. Darui, Baki, Kirabi and Gai with Darui being the leader. Kirabi and Gai were close range with Baki supporting with midrange ninjutsu. Darui was considered an elite junin of Kumogakur and one of the more skilled shinobi there next to the Reikage himself and the Hachibi Jinchuriki. Kumo actually considered him better than the Nibi Jinchuriki, because of his Keke Genkai and his ninjutsu knowledge passed on by the Sandime Reikage. With the teams formed, Shikaku cleared his throat and looked up to which Sunid smirked. Only Shikaku was able to formulate a plan in such little time. After the announcement of the teams and his reason behind it, a heavy silence ruled the room as both the Kazekage and the Reikage kept looking at Shikaku who was matching their stare with a bored expression. 
he was already tired of shocking everyone with how fast he was able to gather information and draw a suitable conclusion. No wonder we could not take down the leaf. You are blessed with fine shinobi, Sunad. Sunad nodded. With the groups formed, they will have a week to familiarize with one another. In two days, we'll begin the training exercises. Now I've prepared rooms for all of you to stay in Kanoa for the duration of the training exercises. With everything cleared up, the Kazekage and the Reikages group were directed by the Anbu to where they would be staying for the week. Jiraiya and Naruto had already left the room together towards their intended objective. They had two days off after all, so Jiraiya planned to have it done by then. If Naruto was strong now, after doing what he and the Yondaim intended, the boy will be unstoppable. Equals 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 with Sasuke equals equals equals. Standing in front of a cliff, facing the ocean in front of him, Sasuke was busy contemplating the change of events. He had a slight change of outfit, opting for short sleeves for his white kimono. His mind was entirely focused on his brother's stoic visage and the words he had spoken to Sasuke so as to hide the actual truth. Atachi not only had to K his entire clan because of Kanoa, but also took the blame for it, becoming a missing nin. In his mind, Kanoa not only betrayed his clan but also betrayed Atachi by hiding the truth and declaring Sasuke's brother as a missing nin. As Toby intended, Sasuke's thirst for revenge was now directed at another Ani. Now that you heard the truth, Sasuke-kun, what do you intend to do? Sasuke's eyes was closed as he turned to Toby and then opened up showing his version of the Manjinku Sharingan. I'll burn Kanoa to the ground for what they did to me and my brother. Uchiha Sasuke was seen training with his new Manjinku Sharingan. Now that he had awakened the next evolution of the Sharingan eyes, he felt himself getting closer to fulfilling his newest ambition. His new goal to destroy Kanoa could only compare to the amount of hatred he felt over his brother for what he did against the clan. Of course, Sasuke's new hatred was only fueled by his old one. To believe that everything happened because the Hokage and the Council of Elders had ordered Itachi to do so. The fact that his clan was planning a coup against the village seemed irrelevant to his reasoning now as he went through every skill he had, this time faster and stronger. At this point, Sasuke believed himself to be unstoppable. His eyes showed him everything in slow motion while he moved at his usual speed. Truly, Sasuke was proud of the accursed eye that blessed his clan since its foundation. However, after all his excitement in testing his new set of eyes, one thought still lingered in his mind. Yes, the Sharingan was a fearful tool and even with his three-tome Sharingan, few ever managed to get past Sasuke or even beat him in open combat. Yet, he wouldn't be in the spot he was now, if one Uzumaki Naruto didn't kick the living s out of him. To this day, Sasuke still couldn't see how the Dobe could be that strong. Even his cursed seal level 2 wasn't enough against that red energy of his. It was Sasuke's second time fighting a Jinchuriki and a second loss for him. The first time it was against Gara, soon as Jinchuriki at the time of the invasion. He imagined that since Atachi was chosen by the Akatsuki to hunt the Bayu, then Sasuke presumed that the man was able to beat them even when the demon containers uses the demon's powers. Though, so far there was no news or any proof that Itachi did defeat a Jinchuriki in battle, since according to the man who saved him from Naruto, Itachi was to be used in capturing the Kyubi no Yoko not only because of the Sharingan, but also because Itachi had knowledge of all of Kanoa's secret passageways, since he was an Anbu captain. Now practicing with his special sword and lighting chakra, Sasuke needed all the strength he could get to at least match his brother in strength. Attacking Kanoa without it would be s. Plus, he was confident that his brother would be pissed at Kanoa for placing him in said position. Sasuke was already picturing the village being burned by the dark flames of Amaterasu. Looking from above the valley, Toby could see Sasuke smiling from no reason and could only venture a guess as to what made the young Uchiha smile so viciously. It was quite amusing to the unofficial leader of Akatsuki how easily he could twist the minds of others, playing in their hatred. Sasuke was actually quite easier than he assumed it would be. After all, the boy already carried a large amount of hatred over Itachi. Toby only needed a small fact to redirect said hatred to Kanoa. There was no doubt in his mind that Sasuke would be facing the Kyubi Jinchuriki once more. This time, though, the Manjinku Sharingan would be more than enough to defeat Naruto, allowing the Akatsuki to make the move and capture the Jinchuriki. 
Toby just kept watching Sasuke train, when a creature appeared from the ground behind him. Toby didn't even need to turn to discuss with the present half-man half-plant, before Zetsu began to talk, beginning with the black parts. The Rakage and the Kazekage had arrived in Kanoa with their Jinchuriki and a few elite Junin. It seems the rumor of their alliance was true after all. The Suchikage no doubt wanted nothing to do with anything involving an alliance with Kanoa and the Mizukage's forces are too depleted to focus on anything but the consequences of their civil war. Nevertheless, the three villages alone possess enough firepower to stand the ground against us, I guess. Go and tell Pain, I'll be keeping Sasuke-kun here some company. The plant shinobi nodded, before going back to where he came from, leaving Toby alone to ponder on the new turn of events. Akatsuki alone couldn't hope to march against a war, but perhaps this alliance doesn't involve a straight war, because for that to happen, both Iwa and Kiri had to join as well. No village is that stupid to use most of its force for this war and leave the village unprotected, unless all the five great hidden villages joined in the alliance. That being said, it would be a battle of their elite against the Akatsuki members. Toby smirked at that. The remaining Jinchuriki would be coming to them, relieving the organization from having to find all of them. Equals 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 in Kanoa equals equals equals. Right after leaving the meeting, the members of the newly formed squad went to their respective rooms for the day along with the cages of the two other villages. Naruto and Jiraiya were already gone from the room, as they had now a very important assignment ahead of them. In two days' time, they would have to meet the squad for team practices. Right now, the two toad summoners were at the top of the Hockage building and Naruto was practically trembling in anticipation as he didn't know what to expect now. He was even more unsettled by the fact that Kyuubi hasn't uttered a single word after hearing that Naruto would be receiving all of its chakra. The Chunin had already access to three tails worth of power without succumbing to the chakra's malice. Jiraiya, for his turn, wasn't facing his student now as in mere moments, there would be no secret left to tell the kid. Frankly, he was dreading the outcome, but he realized it was a necessity. The Yondai meant for Naruto to use it after all. Without turning to meet his student's questioning gaze, Jiraiya waited for a while, before both of them vanished in thin air. Naruto didn't have the time to wonder what was going on, before he vanished as well. When he opened his eyes once more, he saw that they were in a different landscape. Jiraiya was there as well as Gamabunta, Gamakichi and two small toads in front of him. He looked around for a while, trying to find out where he was. Welcome Naruto-chan, to Mount Myoboku, Naruto was busy trying to locate the voice, before focusing on the small toad with the black cape. My name is Fugasaku. Wait, how did I get here and why I am here? This time, Jiraiya explained, unless he wanted Naruto to know that something was wrong in his behavior. When you signed the contract, you set up a link with the toads. Just like we can summon them, they could also summon us to their world. And as to why you're here, Fugasaku-sama here has prepared a special room for you to have access to the other half of the fox's chakra. As he expected, the Chunin showed him a confused face at the mention of the word, half. He was counting on that as he explained the entire story in pieces. When the Yondaim Hokage defeated the Kyubi no Yoko, he sealed only half of the fox's chakra in you. He sealed the other half inside a seal with the help of the toads to be later given to you when you're ready. Jiraiya was silently hoping that the kid wouldn't ask questions about the Yondaim, but rather about the current course of action. Naruto spent some time processing the information, before he turned to see Jiraiya doing some hand seals before a scroll came out of his throat. He turned to Fugasaku, seeing as Jiraiya was busy with something. So how am I supposed to release the other half? Certainly it can't be as easy as simply ripping the seal from the fox's cage. The small toad grimly nodded. All will be explained in time, but I can assure you it won't be easy. Put it simply, it will be required of you to face the fox and defeat it in battle. A silence soon ruled the conversation as Jiraiya was busy doing some changes to what appeared to be a large seal being held by a strange-looking toad. The prospect of facing the beast inside of him was too much for Naruto to process now. He was looking down questioning about the slight possibility of him being able to defeat the strongest tailed beast when Jiraiya came and placed a soothing hand on his shoulder. Naruto immediately looked at Jiraiya's face, wondering what the man had to say. This is something that you must do, Naruto. Normally, I wouldn't put you through this now, 
but time sadly was taken from you. Without it, you won't have what it takes against Akatsuki. The Chunin processed it all as he looked at Jiraiya's steeled expression. This was something left to him by the Yondime Hokage, the man Naruto considered his idol. There was no way in hell he would back down from this. He believed himself strong enough to land a couple of significant blows to the fox. If he didn't try, then all the battles, all the training he did to be prepared would be for nothing. He saw in all their eyes that in order for the procedure to start, he would need to at least show his intention to go through with it. If not, then he would be K for sure and the fox would take the opportunity to try and release itself from Naruto's body. Okay let's go then. They all nodded with a smile, before Jiraiya ushered Naruto to the seal he was working on just seconds ago. First, you need to place your hand on the square in the middle of the seal. Please do so, focusing your chakra and the seal will do the rest. Naruto nodded at the Sanon, before his fingers started glowing with blue energy. He walked towards the seal in great anticipation as he didn't know what would happen once he touched the seal. His heart started beating faster, but his resolve pushed him to go all the way. As soon as he felt the touch, he looked at the seal expecting some sort of bright energy coming from the seal and the fox appearing in front of him. When nothing happened, he looked around to see if he did anything wrong, earning a smile from Jiraiya. Easy there kiddo, you have just completed the first phase of the procedure. The seal in front of you is the key meant to open the gate. Now open your mouth as wide as possible. The Chunin looked at the man for a while wondering why the hell he needed to do that, but complied. No sooner his mouth was wide open, the toad that carried the seal took the opportunity and jumped right in, surprising the Chunin as he looked at Jiraiya and everyone in shock. It was Fugasaku who jumped and kicked the toad's bee, forcing it down Naruto's throat. Jiraiya smirked as he saw Naruto coughing uncontrollably on the ground, in a pathetic attempt to force air inside his lungs. He remembered himself in the same position right after Minato performed the sealing ritual that sealed the fox inside Naruto. With Naruto now standing up and wiping the drool from his mouth, he looked at Jiraiya waiting for phase 2. What is the next phase? Now, like Fugasaku-sama here explained, you'll have to face the fox head on. Naruto nodded as he followed the group towards the place where Naruto would be facing the fox. Jiraiya, in the meantime, began to explain what Naruto had to do. When you open the gates, the fox will come at you wanting nothing but to K you. Aside from defeating the fox, you must capture the fox's chakra. As soon as the fight starts, you'll know what you have to do. A bit of warning, though, just like you can capture its chakra, the fox can also capture your own. If that happens, you're finished. Naruto nodded and Jiraiya could see a fierce resolve in the kid's face, even though he knew that Naruto was worried about his odds. It was something all Jinchuriki went through, though. In order to truly master the beast's chakra, the Jinchuriki must face the beast and literally steal it. Just in case I fail, is there anything that can keep the fox from getting free? Jiraiya looked at the Chunin, surprised that Naruto actually voiced his concern over his odds. Not that we expect you to, but steps have been made just in case. The room we are about to enter is a special chamber filled with seals that are able to keep the fox inside. The Chunin just nodded without uttering more words, which still frightened the Sanin a bit. For someone who used to be so loud and obnoxious, seeing Naruto behaving like this still unnerved the Sanin. He blamed everyone for this, but above all, he blamed himself for not protecting Naruto enough, forcing the kid to take all matters on himself. Perhaps if he had told the truth back when the timing was right and taken Naruto under his wing, then he wouldn't be this way now. There was a reason that Kanoa no longer forced too many responsibilities in one so young. The inexperienced mind just couldn't cope with the pressure. He could see in Naruto's eyes as they walked, that the kid had taken the fox's burden all to himself and it saddened the man that he couldn't do anything to aid Naruto against the fox. After five minutes walking, the group stopped in front of what looked like a warehouse. The door opened and Jiraiya stopped Naruto before he could enter. Sadly, I can only show you the door Naruto, it's you that must walk through it. The boy nodded with a smile as he understood. He walked inside the structure, before he saw the door closing. As soon as he heard the noise of the door closing, the walls started to glow as the seals were being drawn right in front of him. The entire procedure took one minute, before he saw that the seal arrays were drawn around a square that was located in the middle of the room. 
he jumped from his position and landed inside the square, before seating in lotus position and closing his eyes. In doing so, he didn't notice that the room being engulfed in a bright white light as he went straight to the room where the fox was being held. Equals 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 at the fox's cage equals equals equals. When Naruto opened his eyes once more, he was standing in front of the fox's cage and looking straight at the creature's eyes as the demon stared at him as well. Above all things passing in Naruto's mind, was to hear what the fox thought of all this. The deal was that in exchange for using the fox's chakra, Naruto allowed access to the outside world. That meant that the QB now shared his ability to hear and see the outside world. No doubt you heard everything that happened until I came here. I want to hear your side in this. Naruto asked, but the fox remained silent, but the fox didn't divert the stare. Pathetic meat bag, I care very little about your human problems. In my opinion, you're weak and you forever will be without my help, of course. Despite the dire situation, Naruto couldn't help but frown at the beast's comment. He was already thinking of ways to beat the living crap out of the fur ball for the comment. Should you decide to go through with this little plan of yours and release me, I guarantee you that I'll show you how pathetic you really are. Not to mention that in doing so, you'll be condemning the entire world to hell. This place your body is right now won't be able to hold me in as I'll be prepared for when I escape. Naruto looked at the fox in front of him this time with narrowed eyes. He was having doubts about this, but now the game was on. It was stupid of me to come here and try to reach a settlement with you bastard Kitsune. Let's deal with this s. Naruto marched towards the cage and lifted the seal tag that kept it locked. In front of him was a strange symbol that appeared to be some kind of lock. He figured that the key he received earlier was to open this strange device. After activating it, he saw the same lock structure being drawn in his hand, before he placed his hand on the lock and turning it. In little more than five seconds, the lock was no more and the fox slammed the prison bars, violently opening the gates, while trying to cane Naruto right there. The Chunin had already jumped backwards by the time the lock was opened and saw with surprise that next to the fox a shimmered image appeared. Looking to his right, Naruto saw in surprise that he had a similar one as well. A bit of warning, though, just like you can capture its chakra, the fox can also capture your own. As he remembered Jiraiya's words, he now connected the dots that this appearance represents the fox's chakra he was supposed to steal. He could see the fox smirking at him, probably believing that he was nothing but a healthy snack for the beast. Suddenly, the creature lunged at its host, attacking Naruto head-on with its claw. Naruto evaded the attack and started to run on top of Kyuubi's arm, while at the same time picking up his metal staff and twirling it. He dodged Kyuubi's other hand trying to dismiss Naruto just like a human being sending a fly away from his body. Naruto soon reached the fox's head and aimed a powerful strike towards the fox's right eye, hitting it. The fox roared in pain, since the staff was layered with wind chakra. Naruto immediately went towards the energy he needed to capture and started the process of sucking the fox's chakra. He only had time for a little bit, before having to sever the link as one of the fox's tails was about to hit him. Naruto had to force a majority of wind chakra towards stopping the force of each tail while evading them to his best ability. Naruto took advantage of the distance and made a long series of hand seals, before molding a large quenny of chakra for this technique. Against the QB, Naruto couldn't afford to focus on anything but destructive techniques. Fuyuten Serezu no Tatsumaki, Wind Release, Slicing Tornado Technique. In front of Naruto, the powerful beast of wind charged against the QB, before slamming it full force. The QB, though, merely stood its ground while battling against the powerful wind technique. It roared in defiance, before releasing the hurricane from his presence, but not without a cost. Naruto's technique was not only strong, but filled with wind chakra. Naruto could see a great number of deep sea in Kyuubi's fur that must have hurt like AB. He didn't have time to smirk at the fox's misfortune as the beast opened his mouth and threw a Bayudama straight at the Chunin who looked at it in surprise. The violent energy rocked the cage. Naruto, however, appeared a few inches away from the blast, summoning a last-minute cage bunchen to replace himself. He just didn't have any defensive technique in his arsenal strong enough for that which frightened him a little. It seems the fox is indeed trying to K-me. I can't allow him time to prepare that technique. Naruto had to run quickly as the fox was preparing another Bayudama. 
He used his mastery in wind to increase his speed until he appeared right beneath the fox's claw. Naruto immediately summoned a cage bunshin and jumped together while forming a considerable Udama Raisingan. The fox looked up and snarled at the kid who insinuated he could hurt the almighty Kyubi no Yoko. The energy formed by the Raisingan was 4 meters wide in diameter as Naruto dived towards the fox. Kyubi used all its tails to block the powerful ball of energy. Naruto tried to create some distance and tried evading the fox's tails, but one did hit him and send him flying. Since the place was filled with water, it smoothed his fall. Quickly summoning three cage bunshin, all four of them began a large series of hand seals, before the water on the ground started to stir. Sutin Suryudan no Jutsu, Water Release, Water Dragon Projectile Technique. Four water dragons charged at Kyubi who wasn't able to parry the attacks, roaring in rage as each dragon did its damage on the fox's fur. Naruto looked at the creature from his position, wondering how the hell he will defeat the fox if every technique he threw at the Kyubi, his body would heal instantly. It's not like his chakra capacity was endless here. The Chunin was surprised as hell when the fox managed to gather energy inside its mouth faster than before and threw it at Naruto. The energy was approaching the Chunin fast and the Shinobi didn't have the time to dodge or even summon a cage bunshin to help him escape. Suddenly, something appeared in front of Naruto that surprised both him and the Kyubi. Kanji started being written in thin air, forming a strange structure. The Bayudama slammed at the strange seal structure, before being sucked inside and disappearing. The energy appeared far from his position, before blasting the area far from Naruto. When Naruto turned to see what happened, he was shocked as hell to see none other than the Yondime Hockage there with his arms stretched. Yondime, what are you doing here? The man in question smirked at the younger blonde. Now is not the time to talk Naruto. You have a mission at stake here. The Chunin kept looking at the man he referred to as his idol in continued surprise. Surely, he wasn't seeing things, because the fox was now angry, well angrier than before. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the sudden appearance, but turned to the beast he was facing. He had a great number of questions and he was getting answers after this mess was fixed. Looking at the beast, he charged at the beast while dodging its tails, before standing right in front of the fox, while finishing a long series of hand seals. Fuyutanatsugai, wind release, pressure damage technique. The huge dome of wind charged from all directions, hitting the fox full force, once more earning a mighty roar in defiance. Once more, Naruto was surprised when a good number of chains came from the ground and trapped the fox in place. Naruto didn't understand a thing as now next to the Yondime Hockage, was a long red-haired very beautiful woman. The chakra chains came from her back and both of them were smiling at Naruto. Now, more questions appeared in Naruto's mind. He presumed that since the Yondime performed the QB sealing inside of him that the man would be here, but who was this woman and why could he sense something else radiating from these two? He turned to the fox and noticed that its attention wasn't focused on him, but on the two new presences behind Naruto. Taking advantage of the situation, Naruto grabbed the fox's energy and started the stealing process. He could see the red malevolent substance leaving the fox and reaching his body, before engulfing his body. His body started trembling in rage as he could feel the same evil aura as he felt when he used the fox's chakra for the first time. Despite it all, he didn't stop the procedure. He didn't know what the hell was going on, but he was damned if he didn't take advantage of this opportunity. He could see evil in its pure form, caused by the amount of hatred gathered by the humans. When the process was finished, Naruto released its hold on the fox's chakra, but he was still trembling at the level of hatred he was feeling right now. This time, he was relieving all his troubled life before becoming a genin. The fox was weakened on the ground and Minato took the opportunity to reseal the beast inside, while Kushina went to help Naruto get over. She kneeled right in front of him and placed a comforting hand on his shoulder, forcing Naruto to look up. His eyes were black and red. Quote, comma, dot. Who are you? Kushina smiled at Naruto. I'm your mother, Naruto, Uzumaki Kushina. In the ninja world, just claiming to be someone meant nothing. However, just looking at the woman's smile was enough for Naruto's eyes to go back to its previous color. Just something Naruto saw in this woman made him believe she was telling the truth. Since the malevolent chakra was now stored in Naruto, the last part consisted in him incorporating it to his own system, thus literally cleansing it. 
Looking at the woman that appeared to be his mother, Naruto started focusing on his chakra. He needed to control. He screamed in fury not allowing it to control him, before a golden energy appeared surrounding his body. The pain was gone as he looked at this new transformation with nothing but curiosity. The young blonde noticed that the Yondime Hockage was done trapping the fox once more and appeared next to the red-haired woman. We are very proud of you Naruto. No wonder, you're my son. Minato showed a smile similar to Naruto's own when he was genuinely happy with something. The Chunin kept looking at the two in front of him, still having trouble swallowing the truth. The golden energy was already gone as he started walking slowly towards them while trying to call them by the names, by their relation towards him. It was so surreal, meeting them after close to 16 years. Each step solidified the notion that he wanted to believe that he had finally met his parents. Each step he realized that he had parents who loved him and that he wasn't abandoned because of his status as a Jinchuriki. When he stopped and stared at his parents, every emotion that he repelled, every tear he tried so hard not to fall, every force he had in not crying was released right there as he enveloped his parents in a long and hard embrace, while releasing close to 15 years worth of tears. Minato and Kushina eagerly returned the embrace, both crying as well as this was the first time the Namikazes got to hug each other in 16 years. The family was reunited once more and Naruto wanted to savor each second of this. Equals 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 outside Naruto's mindscape equals equals equals. The place Naruto was in had a special room where Jiraiya and Fugasaku were there watching the Chunin since the beginning. They were surprised and rather frightened when the red energy surrounded Naruto. The tails were appearing one after another and by the third tail, Jiraiya was convinced that something went terribly wrong and with a heavy sigh, was already preparing the adjacent seals inside the room for when the fox took full control over Naruto's body. It was only due to Fugasaku's insistence that Jiraiya waited to use the seals when the fourth tail appeared. When the tails were slowly receding, both Jiraiya and Fugasaku realized that both were holding their breath without realizing it. Now both were smiling as the kid had done it, apparently. Equals 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 inside Naruto's mindscape equals equals equals. The Namikazes were now seating inside a blank room, conversing about Naruto's life as well as what really happened at the time of the fox's attack on Kanoa. Naruto was shocked to know that the attack wasn't random, but planned by a man wearing an orange mask with swirling design. He was even more surprised when he asked his father about a similar one that prevented him from taking Sasuke to Kanoa. Naruto now believed that this man was the real leader of the organization after him and already made a mental note to report his findings to the Alliance when he came back. Right now, Naruto's entire attention was focused on the picture in front of him. His parents were looking at him with a bright smile on their faces. He admitted not having that much experience in being a part of a family. He could see the similarities between his life and how his parents behaved. His mother clearly was the one he took his personality from and his appearance mirrored his father almost completely. A single tear escaped his eye as he smiled at them. This picture would be forever recorded in his mind. What's wrong, sweetie? Asked Kushina before Naruto showed a smile. It's nothing, I'm just happy to have had the chance to meet you too. Both Minato and Kushina smiled. Ever since I was born, I was on my own trying to survive. People sent me looks all the time. Vendors overpriced everything I wanted to buy being food, clothes and ninja supplies. Sandai Moyuchin tried his best to take care of me, but he had an entire village to run. Despite it all, not once was I told of the truth of what I am or who my parents were. I didn't know if I was abandoned by you guys. Both Kushina and Minato knew about all this, having been inside of the seal, sharing their child's pain. But now that I had the chance to meet you too, it's been a dream of mine and for that I thank you all for what you did. Looking at Naruto, both his parents could see that their son was happy. They were prepared to face his pent-up anger if they had to. Naruto needed to master the fox's chakra. Minato could only wonder how Naruto will behave when he confronts Jiraiya after knowing that the man is his godfather. Now Naruto-kun, I can see you have a girlfriend, huh? Can we expect some grandchildren soon? Naruto looked at his mother with a nervous smile on his face. Kachan, I don't think I'm ready for having a baby, although it would be so nice to have one. I don't know about Yugao Chan, though. Both parents laughed at their kid's embarrassment. Minato, being the hawkage, knew little about his daughter-in-law. 
he remembered her as a fresh out of the academy genin and the woman from Naruto's memories. Even so, he could see how his son brightened when he spoke about Yugao to Kushina. He started to pay attention as the boy was still talking about her. Yugao Chan and I have been together for two years now, but with the world in this state, having a child now would only place him or her in the middle of this mess. Not to mention that I'm completely alien to the prospect of being a parent. Minato and Kushina actually smirked at the last part. Kushina, though, decided to comment on something rather funny. Naruto-kun, no parent is ever going to be prepared. I remember when I announced to your father that I was pregnant. He just kept repeating the phrase, I'm going to be a father, for half an hour. Minato actually frowned at the revelation, earning a warm laughter from their son. Plus with him gone constantly either in missions or handling the village, he didn't have the time to be around much to help me during the pregnancy. In choosing not to have a child during war time, you have showed us a very mature decision, typical of any parent and for that I'm really proud of the man you became, Naruto-kun. Naruto nodded in appreciation, before being surprised that the images of his parents began to vanish a little bit. Both Minato and Kushina were already aware of this as they had to use the remaining chakra they had inside the seal to aid Naruto against the fox. Minato placed a comforting hand on Kushina's shoulder and nodded at her with a smile on his face. He then turned to Naruto. I believe our presence here is at an end, Naruto. In aiding you against the fox, we have used all our stored chakra. Naruto looked like he was about to protest and even swallowed hard. I understand and thank you both for ever being there for me, even if I only knew about this now. His parents shared their son's humor. I'll always cherish this memory of us fighting together as a family. Naruto couldn't express his feeling in words anymore and gathered Minato and Kushina for a family hug, trying to take as much time as possible feeling the warmth of their embrace. I love you all and I'll make you too proud of me, of that I swear. We are already proud of you Naruto-kun. One last thing, though, before we go. Naruto looked at his father in the eyes. Locate our house in Kanoa. Talk to Jiraiya-sensei, he knows where the house is. He is your godfather after all. Naruto nodded at him, before seeing their image disappear for good and a lone tear escaping his mother's eyes that fell on the water. When Naruto realized, he was back inside the cage room, giving his back to the fox he had just fought against. From the fox's appearance, it was clear that it has seen better days. The QB was almost out of breath and his fur was practically falling from his body. How do you feel now that you've practically stolen my chakra against my will, brat? If it wasn't for your parents helping you, I'd be eating your bones right now. Naruto's back was still turned to the fox, before he turned with a smile on his face. When I had access to your chakra, I could feel the amount of hatred you carry with yourself all this time, fox. I now understand the reason behind your behavior. Kyuubi's eyes were focused on his jailer as Naruto spoke still with a smile on his face. I don't know how, but I swear to you that I will do everything I can to rid you of your hatred. It is my compromise to you. The fox narrowed his eyes at the Chunin, before sneering at him. Pathetic, you couldn't even cure Sasuke, let alone attempt to tamper with my hatred. You've known me long enough to realize one important aspect about me. Naruto vanished from his position, before appearing right in front of Kyuubi's eyes. I will never give up. Naruto smiled once more, before leaving the place. As he walked away, he didn't know that the fox was watching his back questioning if the kid's words had merit or was just like everyone else before him. Equals 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 outside his mindscape equals equals equals. When Naruto opened his eyes, he was back inside the room at Mount Myoboku. So much has happened in such a short time that he actually felt kind of dizzy. He fought the Kyuubi no Yoko with his strongest techniques, he met his parents who happened to aid him against the fox, he learned that they were indeed their parents and the real truth behind the Kyuubi's attack. Above all, he remembered one specific piece of information that made him slightly mad. The door behind him opened and Jiraiya walked through it, apparently congratulating Naruto for being able to confront the fox and complete the necessary procedure. Congrats Gaki, now we can go back to Kanoa. Your new team is waiting for you. Jiraiya was a little taken aback when Naruto stared at him with apathy. Naruto, then, got up from his seating position. Thanks a lot, Godfather. The last word was spoken with such spite that to Jiraiya it felt like he received a jab far stronger than Sunid's. 
The perverted Sanon was frozen in place, while Naruto was walking out of the room, not even bothering to hear the explanation of why the man didn't bother to mention the truth during their training trip. It happened just like he feared it would. He knew Minato to be a genius and he knew that somehow he would have left something inside the seal that allowed him to reach to his son. The last thing he wanted right now was to deal with this mess. Well, aside from the fox taking over, that is. He had agreed with Sunid that the timing just wasn't appropriate to reveal the truth to Naruto, especially since Awagakur had declined the alliance. Marching outside the room, he found Naruto waiting just outside. It was now needed of him to talk to the Gaki and try to absorb his anger somewhat. Naruto. Jiraiya tried to talk, but Naruto interrupted. I'm not looking forward to any sort of explanation here. I'm not mad only at you for not speaking the truth, but Sandaim, Sunid and even Kakashi Sensei as well. They all knew and no one even bothered to tell me about it. Jiraiya was looking down at this point. My parents did the impossible by sealing a bit of their chakra inside the seal so that they could talk to me. You all, on the other hand, were in my life since I was born and didn't bother to tell me, or even give any indication. As a shinobi of the village, I understand why none of you told me. The Sanon looked up in hope, but Naruto wasn't finished. As a human being, however, I find myself wondering how I'll ever forgive all of you for keeping me away from the truth all this time. Jiraiya just didn't have words right now. It was inevitable that Naruto would react like this. How the hell do we get out of this place? Naruto screamed looking for Fugasaku to take him to Kanoa. Equals 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 with Sasuke equals equals equals. After taking a fair amount of time adapting his skills to the Manjinku Sharingan, Sasuke marched towards Tobi demanding to review Itachi's location. The leader was all too happy to oblige giving him everything Sasuke needed to find Itachi. The following match fit right in his plans as Itachi was a wild card in his organization. Tobi knew that Itachi wouldn't do the organization's bidding for long. Quite frankly, Tobi much preferred someone to whom he could easily manipulate to do his personal bidding. Sasuke would be the vessel of his will. As he saw the Uchiha leaving the area, Tobi couldn't help but smirk behind his mask, before vanishing in thin air. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.